Did you do that? Did you ruin Daddy's chair? <laughs> Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Now, I don't really do camera reviews because I'm not really that technical with cameras, but uh, I was out in the woods the other day shooting off some film and I met this guy who was walking his dog and we stopped and we started talking about photography and he was telling me back in the day when he used to have his dark room and printed, it, developed his own negatives and printed his own prints, etc, etc. And we got into this conversation. Now, he then turned around and said, uh, I've got this old film camera. He said, I don't use it anymore. He said, you're welcome to have it if you want. So I thought, yeah, okay. And uh, he gave me his address and I went round and this is it, a Canon EF SLR from the 1980s. And you know, it's, it's a bit rude to, to sit there and start checking it and make sure it works. The guy's given it to me. So I said, thanks very much and went home. And uh, of course, then I started looking at the camera to see if it's going to function or not. If you've never bought an SLR before, or you have got one, not sure if it's working, I'm going to go through what I do to see if this camera works. Now, a little bit about this camera, first of all, it's heavy. This is like, he said to me he got it in 1985 and it cost him 480 something pounds, which was a lot of money back then. And uh, so it came with, the, it, came, it came with this case. And I know that back then they did have these, you know, I mean, look at it, it's, the case makes sense because if you drop it, it's not going to damage anything around you. If you drop the camera, it's just not going to, it's probably just going to bounce. Whereas you get today's DSLRs, you drop them, it's just going to break. But um, this thing is like built like a tank. It really does feel, it, it just feels so heavy and, uh, and well built, you know, well made. So the first thing I do is take off the lens. Um, and I just have a little look at the lens, make sure there's no moss or fungus or scratches on the lens. And also make sure that the, the aperture ring and the sele aperture selection is working nicely. So that's all nice and tight. The focusing on the ring is really, it flows nicely. It's not loose. So I know the lens is a good one. So onto the camera itself, now I've got the lens off, I can look at the mirror and just make sure the operation of the mirror is working correctly, it's going up and down, it's not getting stuck at all, or it's not slow. And as you can see, it's working nicely. And even if I was to put my hand inside and just pull it up, the spring's working well. So the mirror's good. We know we've got a mirror that's not gonna get stuck, it's just gonna keep going up and down. So next thing I check is open the back of the camera. Just make sure there's no rust inside and and it's pretty clean, and this is. Um, I'll be checking the, the curtain at the back, and I'll be checking every shutter speed, just to make sure that that is not getting stuck, and that is also firing properly. So we'll start off from the thousandth for the second, all the way down, 500, 250, 125, 60, and so on. And when you start getting down to the slower speeds, one second, there you go. It's working. So some of these cameras got electric components inside and normally for the light meter of the camera. And generally you'll find uh, a battery, this has got two, but generally you'll find a battery compartment underneath. And if we just take one out, Just have a look inside, make sure there's no battery inside and it's not been corroded. This is very clean indeed. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to test this in a shop. I need to get a battery to test this. Now you, you can't really find these batteries anymore that fit inside these cameras, but normal button cell batteries I find work. They might move around a little bit, but once you close the lid, it will make the connection and make the circuitry work. Unfortunately, this one doesn't work. The electronic components inside control the light metering system and also control the uh, slower shutter speeds as well. Uh, so if I want to shoot two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, 15 and 30 seconds, it's not going to work because there's no power to hold the curtain open. I did open it up and have a little look at the back, I opened this and I did find a wire that was broken. I managed to solder the wire back onto the uh, contact, but it's still, it still didn't work, so but it doesn't bother me because you know I'm not I don't need the light meter inside of it, and if I do want to shoot slower speeds, I could just take a release cable. So okay, so now that I know the mirror's working and I know that the inside the curtain is firing properly against all the shutter speeds that I've tried, 
What about the light stills? Now, although that's all working, I could go out and take a load of pictures and be really excited, come back and it could have light leaks. So all along here, you'll see the light seals, you'll see a little tiny spongy bit inside. And that shouldn't be broken or it shouldn't be brittle, it shouldn't be uh, flaking or falling out. That should be quite snug inside. And this, generally these light seals need to be replaced at some point and most of my SLRs, in fact all of them, I've replaced the light seals, very cheap to buy online and uh, yeah it's quite a fun little project to yourself you have to cut it all out yourself measure it and etc you can still buy them as templates but they're more expensive um, so that's one check is just visually looking at the light seals to make sure uh, that, that they're not flaking or anything like that so a visual test on the seals is okay but the real test is when you put a roll of film in on a bright day come back and develop um, now what I'm going to do with this camera is I'll put a roll of film in inside take it out in a bright sunlight if it's not bright outside I'll bring it indoors under a bright light and I'll burst off a few frames and uh, then I'll cut the uh, film out of the camera and develop it myself that way I can look at the negatives and see if there's any uh, light leaking I'm certainly not going to go out and start shooting for a couple of hours come back and then realize I've got light leaks it just seems a little bit of a waste of time um, a waste of my time anyway so uh, yeah so you know the mirror the curtain the seals and checking for light leaks. Also just make sure that none of the buttons are sticking. And then we can check the exposure indicator as well, which is what tells you how many, uh, how many um, exposures you've taken on a roll of film. So if we open up the SLR at the back and then close it, that should reset your uh, exposure indicator back to start. Take a few shots. One, two, three, four, and it says number four. So that's working really well as well. All the mechanics seem to be working fine on this camera, I'm quite lucky. So, so far it's all looking good. The camera seems in really good condition and uh, all in working order. I've checked the mirror, that's flapping up and down quite nicely. The uh, curtain at the back of the camera, that's opening and closing as it should be against um, various shutter speeds. And the, uh, the lens, the aperture ring on the lens is nice and, and, and operational. Uh, the focus ring works really well. And, uh, you know, there's no rust and it's, 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 it's pretty in good condition. The only thing I don't know is whether it's got light leaks yet. I'll find that out in time. Um, but uh, I know the electronics don't work, but as I say, I, I don't care. I've got light meters. I can, I, can, I can get around that. The only thing I don't know is if the hot shoe works. One more thing that I want to check to see if it works, and as I say, it's like the electronics. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And that's the self-timer for doing selfies. Now, I'm not really one for doing selfies. But uh, it's quite handy sometimes if you're doing long exposures and, and whatnot and you haven't got a cable release. So there's the self-timer there. Let's cut the shutter. It's got a fitted little button that you have to press down to release it. Okay. Pull the self timer over. That's worked. So the timer works as well. That's a bonus. So yeah, like I said, it's not a review on the Canon EF, but this is more of you know what to look for when you're buying an SLR. And if you are buying an SLR for the first time and not quite sure what to look for, I'll put some details in the uh, description below of what to ask a seller when you're um, making bids for a camera or if you're near, near on buying a, an SLR camera for the first time, I'll just put some comments in the description so you can ask these questions and see what they come back with. So like I said, I was really lucky with this camera. The gentleman was kind enough to give it to me and I certainly wasn't going to open it up and start playing with it in front of him to see if it worked. That would have been an insult. Instead of that, I took it home and, uh, and, and, and started playing around and it works really well. I've had a right result. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it and subscribe and good luck with your SLR purchases.